It's a great sounding set of amp sims, a very wide variety, useful for way more than metal. I would recommend buying it if it's your first amp or you don't have a well set up chain because this is a tried and true chain that'll give you pretty much all that a guitarist would need. Hi, uh, this is Rich Rath, I'm the Digital Guitarist, and today we're going to have a listen to the Neural DSP Petrucci archetype. Uh, John Petrucci worked with Neural uh, to develop this amp, and uh, my first impressions are it's good for much more than metal. Uh, so I'm going to give you sort of a non-metal perspective on the Petrucci amplifier today. Uh, and walk it through its paces. It's it's extremely versatile, and the closest thing I've seen to uh, an amp with a complete pedal board uh, since, well, Bias, Bias FX does it quite well. It's more focused than Bias, but it hits all the bases. So let's just take a quick walk through. The way the Neural amps work is you have a row of icons on top. So this is for the pre and then this is the modulation pedal board with an overdrive then here are the amp sims themselves of which there's four so there's a, a piezo uh, and then a clean amp um, and then uh, this is for chugging rhythms and uh, this is the the lead amp then after the amplifiers there's a cabinet section you have a choice of microphones here there's a set impulse for each speaker, but you can load custom IRs. So then uh, they provide an EQ. This is a little bit different EQ than the usual for Neural. They usually provide a graphic e EQ, uh, but this looks like it is semi-parametric. And then this is a volume pedal, uh, and this is the time section chorus delay and reverb so let's start with the piezo and i'm going to um swap over to my piezo pickup oh that's not bad Ooh, that's bad oh it has a tuner If you don't know, piezos are supposed to emulate an acoustic guitar, but out of the box, like if you just play them clean through an amp, they don't really sound very acoustic-y. So this looks like there, there's probably... It's mixing in the raw sound with um, maybe uh, what I would do is put in an impulse response for an acoustic guitar body. Uh, so this then, I don't know, I can't, it's too small for me to read. Let's see if I can make it bigger. Oh, air, okay. Yeah, I couldn't read that. So this seems to cut out much of the low end. Uh, and probably makes it so that it fits in a mix really well. Um, so I'm actually going to go through a shootout of uh, acoustic simulations, and this one just made it onto the list. So I'm going to switch back over to my other pickup. And you can hear... Sounds kind of dead. You really need the piezo pickup for this to do its job, I think. Then the clean amp. I don't know if it's trying to emulate a particular piece of gear or not. It's not from the looks. Uh, so let's walk through this. We've got gain, bass, middle, treble, presence, master, and level. So a very straightforward amp with a bright switch. Sounds kind of... Um... A little boxy. Let's actually... Uh, I'm curious how this will sound on a 12 string.
So we're getting a little modulation. It sounds like the chorus is on. Uh, doesn't sound bad, but is it on? No, not the chorus. There's a definite sort of tremolo effect in here, though. Uh, let's move the gate up and see if that has anything. Oh, it seems to be coming from the gate. This won't work at all on the um, uh, heavier tones. So I'm guessing the reason the gate does that is because it's got a bit of slope for the cutoff. So instead of sputtering, it's doing that modulation thing. And you can hear on this amp, when we turn the gate off, we've got the beginning of that hiss. Uh, let me just switch over to one of the bigger amps. So it becomes sort of unacceptable once you get into the high gain stuff. So let's see what we can do with this. Turn the bright off, uh, crank up the gain. Let's put it, almost, oh, that's a weird little switch. Yeah, that's kind of a bug, I think. It's definitely got that uh, Fender Marshall tone stack where the mid sounds better, a little bit scooped. interesting amp. It sounds like it's got a little bit of a bark to it when you crank up the presence, like the, the presence is, um, you get a little bit of the single coil spank out of it. Let's see if we turn the bright on with the gain up. Not a game monster. Get a little bit of single coil spank in there. Uh, let's check the next amp. So this is the rhythm, and here you can hear why we need the gate. So we'll put it about there. So no sputtering on the gate. That's good. So that's got the teeth. Let's see if this, if we reduce the gain. Yeah, it kind of picks up where the other amp leaves off. So that's a nice continuum. All right, so tight. We'll tighten up the bass. So let's see what that does. You know, I wish more amps would have sort of a sweep on this mid spot here, because uh, there's so much tone that you can get out of that. But um, we'll see. There's other ways of getting it. And I think this amp has them. So here's uh, the lead amp, and this really sings. So, um...
just out of the box. That's a beautiful sounding amp. The attack is uh, a little less biting. So uh, instead of getting the chugging sound, it seems like it has a little bit slower attack, uh, which is really nice for creating singing leads. The gate operates pretty well. Uh, let's see. Oh, and we've got a oh sort. <laughs> seems to fill, fill out the mids. All right, so let's actually get into the fun parts. Now, the first thing, if you have a Peddler 3 to hook up with MIDI, the Petrucci archetype will uh, deal very nicely with that. So I'm going to hook up some MIDI. Okay, so this is the wah. MIDI setup is very simple. I gotta use my monitor though to see what I'm sending. So I'm sending channel one CC one ten CC. So we'll set it up to absolute. We want the position. <laughs> I'm probably going to want to adjust uh, the pedal on that. What I would do is uh, change the arc a little bit of the pedal. Seems all the treble comes in very suddenly. Yeah, I think it's going to be the exponential. Um, so this is, I'm using a Keith McMillan soft step uh, with a pedal plugged into it as my controller. Uh, so it allows me to do this. Uh, generally, if you're using a MIDI controller pedal, there'll be some way of uh, setting uh, the curve of the pedal. Because this doesn't sound good when it's going in a straight line. All the treble seems to be in a very short sweep. So the exponential curve basically spreads that out so I have a little bit more. <laughs> A little bit more to work with. There's a couple more pedals. So I happen to have, um, besides the soft step, an ancient Behringer FCB 1010 with two pedals on it. So I'm going to hook up one of those. So first off, we'll see uh, what it is we're sending. So this left one is CC20. Uh, and I am going to set that to pitch transpose. So this is uh, set that up to get some nice dive bombs CC absolute 20 channel what channel is it it's channel channel one okay uh, CC 20 if you click something before you hit MIDI it shows up as the target okay pro tip uh, for the pedal sweep, you want to set this the opposite of how you did for the wah, uh, so that it spends more of the sweep in the middle. That way, it's easier to get back to zero, and then you can bang it all the way to either end to get to the octave, so that will make it easier to play more tunefully by allowing you to, to get to octaves or zero quickly. Um, the nice thing about this is that it's set to semitones um, uh, but it's got a little bit of glide between them it seems so that you can get the sort of dive bomby sound with the pedal
there's a little bit of stair stepping, but there's enough glide that it, it doesn't sound like you're walking down a set of stairs. Okay, and our third pedal that we're gonna do is the volume pedal. And we'll set that up here. too much fun. Let's turn on. So that's the doubler. Very nice uh, to give you a modern lead and rhythm sound. Let's have a look at the EQ and let's have a look at it on the amps with the mid boost. Okay, so there's our mid boost. We'll crank up our mid. Let's turn this off for the moment. So that we can pump the mid range using the wah, which is basically a bandpass filter that um, pumps up whatever frequency you're shooting at. Uh, and uh, let's see if there's another way to do that with the EQ. Yeah, so I'm gonna pump this up, pull this back, pull this back even further, put up the bass a little bit. So that, let's see what we can do with that. If we can, it looks like the different amps. Yeah, remember your EQ settings. That's nice. So you can hear, you get a radical difference in the mid-range. Just by a little bit of motion of that mid-range. So that's a very... All right. Very handy feature. Uh, okay, so now back to our clean amp. And we'll have a look at the pedal board. overdrive is that um, it's mostly punching up the input with a little bit of distortion added in but not a whole hell of a lot uh, so this will give you more uh, of uh, whatever kind of drive your amp already has uh, classic phaser <laughs> recognize that version of rock and roll from the phaser you're pretty old uh, it looks like a classic MXR pedal board uh, and sounds that way too it's another shirt 
another day and another year, but still the same video. So uh, I had some technical problems with uh, uh, doing the chorus delay and reverb section of this video, so I had to uh, redo it. So here we go. Let's dig right in on the chorus. Uh, we'll compare this chorus with the pedal board version. So let's hear that one first. Typical grungy stomp box chorus. It adds a little bit of solid state mojo to it. Basically, the stomp box is a little grungy. Now let's listen to uh, the rack mount chorus. And I expect this will sound more nuanced and sound a little better uh, because it does look more expensive. Um, I turn it on and we'll start out first without the stereo spread on. And that's a lot more subtle. Uh... Okay, so what you'll find though is that this really opens up when you turn on the spreader, but it adds a couple decibels of output, so... so that's the vintage mode. Let's listen to it in uh, spatial mode. And it looks like we can turn that. All right, so the controls are basic here. The main one that gives it more nuance is the dry wet control so we can ease this back and make it into something subtle uh approaching right just to give a little bit of modulation and doubling to your sound all right so that's the chorus pretty straightforward next is the star of the rack section uh, the delay module so let's take a quick walk through here uh first off i don't know why but they have sync and uh, note versus milliseconds as separate things. I don't really know what you would do with sync on and milliseconds. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Um, so uh, that seems like um, an extra control for nothing. Let's actually walk through the mono part first just to give you an idea of some of the cool features of this. So I'm gonna turn all these down. Um, and we're in mono, uh, the high cut and low cut, or the high pass and low pass are off, and we've got a little more than 50% wet with a bit of feedback. So we can hear when we're in it, it doesn't have any zipper noise, but it doesn't do the vintage swooping type thing. And uh Let's actually add some tape crud to it. So this does a couple of things. It not only saturates uh, the signal, but it puts a little bit of slew on the delay change. So ooh, this sounds cool with this feedback. Uh, but let's see what happens when we change our... So that's the behavior of basically a vintage Echoplex when we're in mono. Uh, it gets twice as fun if we switch to stereo. Uh, let's tighten that up. We'll do, let's say, 729. And... What you just saw was that it has a six-second delay on it. You can do some loopy kind of things. 
Why don't we try that? And to get exact times, you can use the control mouse and it'll move slower. Still a little fiddly. One more notch, one more. One more. Okay, we'll, we'll settle for that. And we'll hear what the crossfeed does uh, on this. Okay, so now we've got this nice, interesting loop pad kind of sound going. It'd be great to be able to change the tone and play over the top of that, but there's no tails, and this is a big flaw in both the delay and the reverb. When you turn it off, it just goes off. So you can't play over the top of a loop without it going into the loop. Uh, same with the reverb, it just turns off. Um, okay. So let's actually run one more thing here. Crystal is sort of a granulator. So I'm going to reduce our times here. One and one half triplet. So it adds reversed. and uh, octave up grains. Uh, and let's see what happens if we turn it down. It removes it. Modulation is actually pretty subtle. Uh, to be honest, I'm not hearing it doing too much. Uh, it usually delay modulation will change the pitch. Let's see if we take the, the timing off of it. Let's turn this down and turn the tape up so that we get that modulation. Yeah, I'm not hearing a whole lot happen with the modulation. Uh, so either I'm misunderstanding what that does or it doesn't do much. So let's switch over to the reverb suddenly uh, without any tails. And the reverb is very straightforward. It's a very nice sounding, very clean reverb. Um, but uh, it's not a spring reverb, so if you're using it on guitar and want to get your dub sounds and uh, surf music 
on, uh, you'll have to look elsewhere for a reverb. This is a modern reverb. It's only got that one setting. And if we put it on, it's got a pre-delay, which is nice. It helps keep the notes articulate. And I have the high pass set up to take out some of the low end uh, and a very slight uh, low pass to take out some of the peaks because it's a guitar. Uh, and let's set for a longer decay time, very wet, just to show what the problem is here. Uh, and here, let's take a listen at what happens when we turn it off. So again, missed opportunity there on the tails. Uh, let's do one more thing here. It has a built-in uh, Daniel Lenoiser, the shimmer effect on the reverb. Uh, a lot of uh, effects sell this as uh, a separate plug-in. Uh, so it's nice to have that handy. It only does octave up. A uh, much more versatile one would be the Valhalla Shimmer, which you can do uh, different pitches. But uh, here's your... Oh, I wonder what will what'll happen if we combine that with the crystallizer. Crystallizer. Just a quick voiceover. Uh, one thing I find missing here is uh, that the settings other than EQ don't hold uh, when you switch from one amp to another. It would be great, for example, if you could have a clean reverb chorus go into a lead tone uh, with the reverb off and maybe some echo. So that would be a great thing. You can kind of do it with presets, but it would make it much more powerful if you could do it within a preset. One thing I will mention is the input mode. Uh, it's the input. So with most guitars, unless you have a stereo output on your guitar, which is a pretty rare thing. For guitar, both basically want to leave this on mono, but if you do have a stereo source that you're messing with, let's say a keyboard or a, a sample track or something, uh, you can use stereo, but it doubles the CPU. On the topic of CPU, Let's pull up our host here, which actually has a very handy uh, CPU meter right here where it says DSP. So you can see we're operating all on one, uh, all on one processor. Now let's see, we'll turn off effects and that brings the processing down. So the effects are using a healthy six or seven percent. Uh, the different amp sims actually use much different processing power. The piezo it uses the least, uh, between 7 and 10%. Uh, the clean amp uses around 20, 15 to 20. Our chugging rhythm crunch amp uses 30 to 35%. Uh, and the solo, the lead amp, uses around 25 percent so uh these are are very very uh expensive compared to older amp sims so uh if you like to use complex chains with lots of other vsts this might not be your amp these are expensive modern amp sims so if you lo use lots of other plugins uh this probably won't be your go-to choice uh but let's sum up it's a great sounding set of amp sims, a uh, very wide variety, useful for way more than metal. And uh, I think it's $139 or $149. Uh, I wasn't going to buy it. I would recommend buying it if it's your first amp or you don't have a well set up chain because this is a tried and true chain uh, that'll give you pretty much all the tones that a guitarist would need. If you get into more experimental stuff and use other plugins, it's going to eat up processing power. I did end up buying this, and I don't know if the sale is still on. They didn't say it when it's over, but if you purchase something on the Black Friday sale, which I did, 
uh, they gave you 30% off. And at 100 bucks in Christmas time, this was my Christmas present to myself. But if you're really patient, twice a year or so, they have sales where uh, their amps range from 39 to $49. And at that point, they're a steal. And that's pretty much it for me. I'm the digital guitarist, Rich Rath. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe, please. Uh, I'm begging you. No, I'm not begging you. Uh, anyway, thanks for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you soon. Bye now.